Colin. Oh. Is it? Look at me. Look at you. <laughs> well then, in this little bag is <laughs> her head stuck. I'm so Barbie. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. I just kind of stuck her in there. She's all stuck. She's okay. There you go. Come on out, girl. There you go. She is so 90s, huh? I'm talking to you. Uh, it was 1994, right? And I get this call for this audition. And by then, I was already doing a bunch of toy voices for other toys and dolls and things. And uh, my audition was going to be at Mattel. Hear the sirens. Okay. Wait. Cut. <laughs> This is a 90s hairdo and her little skirt and her little, wait, can you see the boots? The boots? Yes. And on the back, on the back, you part her hair. She has a little button. There's a button. There's a button in there. And when you press the button, she talks. Oh my gosh. Guess whose voice is in it? Can you hold her up to your mic? Let's see if we can pick okay, her up. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might just take her off her stand. Oh, <laughs> sorry, dear. Okay, so I'm gonna press her button. Talk to the mic. Wow, let's get together and listen to music with Teresa later. <laughs> I'd love to plan our party on the weekend. Did you hear it? Yeah, that's so cute. I love it. This is their first uh, real, well, Mattel. I mean, if we're gonna just talk about her. Yeah. This is their first attempt at her talking as a doll. I mean, really, I think there was like one prototype they did, but this was her first time at actually talking, and it's all kind of sentences put together. So it's like, uh, she'll go, going to the mall with Cindy later for pizza. All right, now, it was 1994, I had this audition for a toy, a doll, and, um, the reason I remember the 1994 is because it was the Northridge earthquake. Yeah. So I uh, had an audition to go, was it that day, that very morning, um, the earthquake erupted. Huge earthquake. Walls are shaking, glasses coming off, you know, off of shelves. It was intense. And at that time I had my daughter who was a baby. So she was about maybe a year, year old. And um, I remember thinking, oh, out of all this chaos, my audition. <laughs> such, an, such an actress. So then um, it was just chaos from that, that point. So I remember thinking, okay, I'm going to call down to Mattel and tell them I'm not going to come to my audition. And so I made that call. And I'm just going to just fast forward this a little bit. And uh, the director got on the phone, Jacques. Jacques Geelong and said, uh, I understand, no problem, don't worry about it, just you do what you can, but can you just maybe audition on the phone for me? Um, I will know basically if you have the right sound for what we're looking for. Now at this point, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know that he's talking about Barbie. I just think it's a doll. So I'm stressed. The tremors are still coming in. I sit down on my bedroom floor and on my phone, I said, well, uh, what would you like me to say? And he said, um, he goes, just say this, just say, hi, 
this is Barbie, welcome to McDonald's. But Barbie, what does he mean, Barbie? Oh my gosh, Barbie? So here I am, <laughs> so stressed out. Don't think about the fact you're gonna audition for an icon in the middle of an earthquake. So I sat through my bedroom floor with my phone. I said, it's okay, I'm, I, I'm ready. Hi, this is Barbie. Welcome to McDonald's. He didn't say anything. I went, did you want me to do it again? He goes, no. no that, was, that was great, Chris. It was great. And I just went, I'm so nervous. Please. Hi, hi. I kept doing it. And I goes, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it was the, this does not happen in real voiceover world. <laughs> so he said, um, can you come down here tomorrow to Mattel? I went, huh? Come down to Mattel tomorrow? Sure, you bet. I hung up and I went, I'm going to Mattel, honey. I know we're in an earthquake, but I gotta go. He goes, <laughs> he goes, you go, Chris, you go. So I, I thought to myself, oh wait, I don't have any running water. I have no, I can't take a shower. I can't get all pretty. <laughs> It, it's Barbie. I'm gonna go with my baseball cap on, you know. I'm gonna move up this month. And so I put on my baseball cap and I didn't shower. And then I went down to Mattel and right there behind the, the glass of the recording booth at Mattel, there was um, like five or six people sitting behind the glass waiting for me. And so I went in, sat down on my little stool, and I went, okay ready and the director says um Chris just do what you did on the phone but I don't remember what I did on the phone because I'm having an earthquake and I'm you know stressed I said okay <laughs> just my Facebook app. hi it's me Barbie welcome to McDonald's nobody said anything quiet all they did was this And as if in slow motion, he top, gets the top back button and goes, can you start tomorrow? We'd like for you to be Barbie, Barbie's voice. And I went, I just kind of went, took my baseball cap off went. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I could be ready. Friend, she could talk all day. Oh, wow. I know. It'll be fun to dive to the beach. Yeah. Be great to go to the mall. Cool. Let's get together and watch videos. Super Talk Barbie has so many fun ideas. Cool. Super Talk Barbie doll says 100,000 things. I, I had this picture in my mind of me and my sister on the bedroom floor playing with dolls and me saying, but I want to be Barbie this time. <laughs> oh, I hit my mic. So was there a favorite Barbie item or toy or game that you voiced that was your Oh my gosh. Uh, one that stands out? There were so many Barbie projects that I remember one really stands out my mind and it was, it was Christmas and we were working on this one Barbie and the thing that made it special about her was her mouth actually moved. They had this idea that they've been doing so many different things. Let's make Barbie's mouth go up and down. <laughs> So as she talked, and up and up and out, <laughs> the mouth dropped down. <laughs> but what they the idea was, they wanted to put every little girl's name into her, you know. So when when the doll, when you pressed her, she'd say, "Hi, Cindy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Marie." Whoever the little girl was, she would say their name. Well. Maybe this isn't my favorite project, but it's actually very funny. Um, I spent three months just saying names, little girls' names. Tina, Linda, Lisa. That's over and over. And then when we finished that, they got out a baby book and we went through baby books and names. And then they decided to do other languages. Lupi, Lucita. And we went on and on with those. And then they decided to do um, Cantonese and different languages. So there I was, 
day after day just saying names. And I had to take breaks because I said, I can't do it. I gotta get out of my chair. I can't do another name. I have to go take a walk. Well, the big thing was at Christmas time when she came out, everybody was excited. Barbie is gonna say your name. And so when you played with the doll, you go, Barbie, she's supposed to go, Hi, Merry Christmas. It's me, Barbie. Hi, Loopy. But her mouth got stuck. <laughs> and it was a disaster. Every little girl on Christmas morning had a Barbie like this. <laughs> her mouth wouldn't work. Oh, it came and it went away. I think it was called Talk With Me Barbie. Talk With Me Barbie. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my neighbors are going, my Barbie doesn't work. Close the door, honey. Close the curtains. That's not my fault, really. <laughs> and so from that point, for eight years, for that first eight years, I did every uh, doll, every um, bicycle that talked and watched the talk, and her walkie-talkies and her cell phones. It was a godsend thing for me. It was like the changing of my career and it was awesome. Wow. Did I just, I feel tired telling that story. I get so, <laughs> it's happened again to me. <laughs> Let's talk about adventures in Odyssey. Tell us about your role. Is it the hostess? I'm the hostess. Tell or us about host. your role as the hostess and then we'll move into what's the most valuable aspect of being in such a long running production. Adventures of Odyssey is a radio drama started out for, with kids mostly, but it's grown into adults, truck drivers on the road listen to it, everybody listens to it. It's What it is, is it's a radio drama that's written and written so well and produced so well that um, people have been listening for 30 years and love it. So kids that grew up listening to Adventures in Odyssey now have their own kids and they're listening to Adventures in Odyssey. So it is the longest running radio drama in history. And I'm on it still, and I don't know why they haven't replaced me. And your role is? I'm the host of the show. I say, I open the show, hi, this is Chris. Welcome to Adventures in Odyssey. 30 years later, and they still have to write that line down for me. <laughs> That's totally me so, too. <laughs> Here, Chris, here's what you say. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but um, I really have to say, the thing that, that makes it so special is the content. They write stories that are very connected with what kids are facing today and situations. They'll talk about divorce or, or struggles of, that a kid might go, go through. And the characters, some of the people on the show have been there for 30 years. Um, they're characters that people and kids have grown up listening to and fell in love with. And it's, it's just a, a town full of um, people that, it's like a, a little bit of Andy, Andy Griffin. The writing, the producing, the, the guys who do the foley, the engineers. It's just magical because it touches hearts and it talks to you about real life things. And kids are, uh, they're a part of it and they feel connected to the characters, you know? And it's one of my very favorite things to do. I, I'm so honored and blessed to be part of Adventures in Odyssey. And they have an adventure club that kids can listen to, and I don't know, I just... Um, and you can find it on, is it on a ra like radio stations around It's the radio stations, uh, it's got an adventure club, you can go on the website, and um, I, I just talk, what happens sometimes they have me call kids for special occasions so I call and these kids all know me so I say hi this is Chris and that's how I open the show hi this is Chris welcome to Adventures in Odyssey and for 30 years I've been saying hi this is Chris and welcome to Adventures in Odyssey and so I call these kids and I say hi this is Chris and they go mom Chris is on the phone oh my gosh click I'm like huh hello <laughs> So sometimes I call them and I say, this is Chris, and I'm calling to say, you know, uh, happy first day of school, or Merry Christmas, or I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, it's not well. Just connecting with kids and 
for me, kids in this world are the most precious thing there is. So, you know, I can go to a party and all the adults are in one room, <laughs> and I'm in the other room with the kids. You know, be goofy, be silly, and laughing and talking. And um, I still do story time for kids. It's always been part of something I've done for years. So I go and we, I read stories and do voices, and then they get up and do more voices, and it turns into <laughs> anything but story time. Oh, I love this. Okay, so it's out now. We can talk about it. And by the way, you're on Fallout 76 too, Miss Paula. Yay! Let's just turn that camera around and we can see you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We're actually long lost sisters. <laughs> Um, it's really funny because that was so much fun for me. I, I have a tendency to do a lot of characters. I'll do like, you know, we the old ladies and oh dear, hello dear. And I do like country ladies and crazy. But Fallout 76 was intense. And I loved it because it gave me a chance to be bad. So instead of Barbie in the box, you know, little good Barbie, I was creepy. Um, I was a see. I was the mother load. The mother load. That was your character name? That was her name. And she was a beacon in this computer and she was so creepy. And she'd go, mother load says go. Warning, you will die. <laughs> creepy stuff, you know. So it was like, or you get robot, you know. Everything she said was very strange. <laughs> I love her. That's so much fun. Yes, and then they, I think I was also uh, a journalist, a really bad journalist. She was giving the senator a hard time. Listen, senator, I know you're nothing but, you know. So she was really tough, too. And then I think, what else did I do? Oh, I was, um, I was a college student who had been left behind after the big fallout. So I did her, her voice talking about how lonely she was. And I think it was a clock. It's crazy things in this one, but grateful. I'm always grateful for work, you know. Had a lot of fun. Um, What's your favorite thing about working in video games? It's kind of different than anything else. Um, they're deep. They're deep characters. They're, you know, you can actually uh, think about what they look like, what they feel like, where they lived. I like the fact there's a story that goes with characters, you know. Because my whole life, that's what I've done. I have collected people and characters wherever I go. It's like if I meet you, you're just logged in there, and I think I'm going to use that someday. And there's this one lady, not to trail off the way I am, but <laughs> I am <laughs> sorry. You're going to know what were we talking about, Chris? <laughs> there's this one lady that I met in Georgia. It was like. This is many years ago, and she was just like this really uh, country lady. She had no, she had black a couple teeth missing, and she had on this cowboy hat and braids and uh, these overalls. And when she talked, she says, "Hi there, what you got? I like you." <laughs> and so when they asked me to do this, they wanted an old country lady. I took her, I took her out of my bag of tricks from how many years ago, and I used her because I, I remembered that character and they wanted somebody kind of rough and country and it's like, I call her Stella Della Rose. And so, <laughs> she was in the video game. <laughs> well, how do you like this background? It's good. We are being spontaneous today and we're finding, um, <laughs> we're finding that the sun is persistent. That's okay, everywhere we go, the sun follows us and that's Look a good the art. Thing. for voice actors oh. with a, in a career with the inevitable disappointments. I mean, how do you weather these moments? Good question, because because I've I've literally, literally been in this business for over 30 years. So I'm one of those that, you know, been to the mountaintop and been down. So I've had a great, great um, many blessings of being, you know, many jobs. And then you go through these horrible deserts 
where it's just the drought of droughts, and and you really feel like like every actor will tell you it's it's the end. It's never going to happen again. So I, I would just want to say this: uh, two things. One is you got to be a kid. You got to have a kid spirit. I don't care how serious your role is. There's got to be something in you that connects with that part of you that says, "Wow, a superhero! Wow, she's a witch!" <laughs> You've got to just be fearless and be the kid and be excited about your work. If you get to a place where you're going, oh, another audition, you just have to be happy and excited about everything you do. That's my feeling, and I am a big kid. You can ask my husband. He thinks I never. <laughs> Which is fine, because that's, he knew what he was getting. <laughs> the other thing I think is important now, um, because, like I said, I've had much work, and then I've had it where it's the desert, and I, it's just like tumbleweeds are blowing through, and you're thinking, oh, it's over. Um, just this last year or two, I was going through one of those droughts, and I thought, I am auditioning for everything. I am auditioning for everything I can, and I'm giving it all that I can. And um, I just remember thinking, maybe, maybe this is kind of the end of the road. Maybe this is the kind of the road. Of course, in my life, I have filled my life with other things. So that when you have a plate of food, this is how I picture it. You don't put all mashed potatoes. You don't put all your salad. You, you balance out your plate of food and so that you have other things on your plate, which for me, I have family, I have my spiritual life, I have uh, my thing with kids. I, so I'm not just so focused on that one thing that I'm starving. So I was going through such a drought of auditioning all the time and then it happened. The phone call came in that you said, what? because you're competing against five million people for a part. And you know what I'm talking about. You think, why are they gonna pick me when they've got all this? So that when they pick you, you say, what, why? <laughs> what did I do different than I did 500 times ago, you know? And you get the call and you go, okay, yes, I, I'm still alive, I'm breathing. And it just so happens this last particular one gig that I can't really talk about, they like heard me and they went, oh, she's kind of, we like that. So they sent me something else and they requested me and I booked that. I went, and then that went to that and I went, you just have to have in your mind and your heart that just because it's desert, it doesn't mean it's done. You have to have faith that there's more. At the end of my life, you know, we're all going to leave this life, and um, I, hopefully I'll be in heaven. I, my biggest, um, I don't really care that my gravestone says, greatest voiceover artist in the world. You know, I'm not, in any way, I love my work, I love this business, but that is not what matters to me. What matters to me is that it would say something like, kind person, loved people. That's important to me. I mean, I, I, what's it going to matter when you're gone and it's just saying greatest, you know, whatever. But I think uh, what, what I care about is people. And I feel like this kind of business for me is very special. But I think the magic of it for me has always been the road into people. And I feel like if I can touch people and make them laugh and talk about their lives, See, they love the voiceover business because it's fun and it's interesting, but it's my secret weapon into talking about them. Does that make sense? Totally. totally. So, I, I love this. Just don't put me in a booth by myself for a long time because I'm not good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be around people so I can talk. What is your spirit animal and why? This is our fun question. Or, or if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? So, what's my spirit animal and what tree would I be? You could pick one or the other. Oh, I, I'd have to be like a tree with you an animal be... running up it. Oh! <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, let's see. Um, you know, that's a really hard question. I think if I was going to be an animal, I would be an otter. A little otter. Because otters just like to play. <laughs> and they're in the water and they're just goofing around playing. But I'd like to be a combination animal. An otter with something else with it. Um, maybe something fierce. Kind of a fierce otter. Maybe a leader of the otters. <laughs> okay. Can you, what you ask me? What, what favorite dessert I you have? Maybe that's better. What's your favorite dessert? Oh, how funny you asked. Uh, pistachio ice cream. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think the cl store's closing. You want to go in and get some? 